Good evening. Hey, good evening. How are you doing? ¿Cómo están? ¿Qué tal? Fine, fine. Thank you. You're fine. Awesome. That's good. <clears throat> and you? I'm good, but it's too hot for me. Yes, it's too hot for me. I think uh, I don't know what is happening. During the morning time call. Night. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh. I'm sweating. 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 Bueno, ya es hora. Hay que comenzar. Buenas noches. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. I hope you had had a wonderful weekend and that you enjoy it with family and with your loved ones, right? I do apologize because today, uh, during the day, I didn't send to you anything no good morning no nothing right uh for this week uh, i truly apologize it's been a chaotic day today so it's monday right most of the time mondays are kind of chaotic on my job so hello good evening <clears throat> good evening so, teacher good, evening. good to see you right so it's good to see you back again uh, we are going to get started because uh, it's time consuming. Just say congratulations to this is the last week, right? Basically, so congratulations, you made it, and we are almost done. Pues felicidades, ¿verdad? Eh, ya esta es la última semana y ya terminaron su módulo 2, ¿verdad? Ya van para el 3. Y pues es poco lo que les hace falta. So, vamos a estudiar esto. Which is the grammar making suggestions, right? I'm going to move this uh, square from grammar to a new page because I need to write down some things for you. So, I find out that this, it will be the best option. So, no one is going to lose the track. Uh, where is it the uh, I hate this. Okay, there we go. Hey, good evening, Madeline. Okay, so let's see. I need to move it everywhere. So there we go. Uh, this is the grammar topic, which is making suggestions, right? We study some of those these don't make me this computer what's going on with you let's see there we go and i need you around here hmm. i'm sorry for some reason this is doing something oh there we go so here right eh? uh Last class, we were studying making suggestions, right? We studied a little bit regarding to uh, models, and then we moved a little bit with theorems and so on, but we didn't go deeply on that. So with models, right? With models, you are going to have uh, like that introductory thing, right? That you have there or phrase, which is a maybe, right? So we are going to do a pattern on this one. <clears throat> Let's see. 
I'm so sorry. Um, it's my throat once again is not doing good, right? So you're going to have maybe, you're going to have a personal pronoun, right? Or a person, you are going to have the model plus uh, the verb in base form. plus a compliment, right? Um, the compliment is up to you what you would like to use. So you use whatever you want to, right? So this is will be like the pattern that you are going to have uh, with models, right? This is, is going to call making so <clears throat> suggestions with models. This is with models. So this is what we are gonna have. Let's do it both a little bit bigger. There we go. Pueden ver esto ustedes? Lo ven bien? Sí? Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, teacher. Awesome. Sí, yes, teacher. If there is a if at some point you are not able to see uh, the the letters, right, the words, and you need me to zoom this the page or the screen, let me know. So here, right, making suggestions with models, you can use uh, different models, right? So let's see. Um, you can use the one that you already have there. We are gonna take our example, maybe you could go to a chat room, right? So there you go, a chat room. Mm -hmm. You can use another one, maybe. You should go to a blind date right and you can use maybe jesus christ you might use a chat room okay so as you might able to see here, you have three different models. The one that they uh, give it to us in the textbook and some others that I added to you. You can use either or with these three models to make a suggestion to someone, right? Here, um, it's going to depend on what exactly do you want to say. As uh, you might see here, you could go to a chat room or you might use a chat room. You should go to a blind date and so on, right? So you can use it depending on what exactly you want to say, but both the three of them, they are four suggestions, right? So um, there is no any difference, right, in meaning or that you can use this one in one case or use the another one in different cases. No, uh, the three of them are used for, um, in this case, suggestions, right? And they will have the same pattern, right? So in every model that you are gonna use, it's going to be the verb in the base form and you can use it with any personal pronoun. Uh, for example, instead of you, you can use uh, she, right? Instead of you, you can use uh, we, right? Instead of you, you can use they, right? So it's up to you which personal pronoun you are gonna use. This will be, of course, depending on the context that you have or the conversation that you are having with the person. ¿Qué tenemos acá? Vamos a tener, eh, para hacer sugerencias con modales, tenemos un modal que es el que ya nos da el libro de texto, que es Cult, y yo les he agregado dos más, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes tengan acá. 
estos tres modales se utilizan para dar sugerencias. Entonces, eh, se pueden utilizar indiscriminativamente dependiendo de lo que usted quiera decir. Eh, la verdad es de que pues, uh, usted puede utilizar en lugar de might could y en lugar de could might. Entonces, eh, en realidad, pues no tienen una diferencia tangible entre cada uno de ellos. Esos son nada más sugerencias. Um, la verdad es de que a veces el hablante hace un cambio eh, pequeño en la cuestión del uso, ¿verdad? Esto, pues usted puede decir que una probabilidad de un ¿qué? 70%. Aquí le está diciendo, pues, como darle prácticamente no una sugerencia, sino más allá un consejo, que usted lo puede tomar o no. Y esto, pues, sí ya es una sugerencia en la cual estamos en una probabilidad de un 50 de 50, ¿verdad? Que pueda ser utilizado o no. Entonces, eh, se podría dividir por porcentaje, si ustedes así lo desean, como entre seguridad, no tan seguro y seguro, ¿verdad? Entonces... Eh, si ustedes quieren verle alguna diferencia, pero en realidad pues no la tienen. Eh, los tres son utilizados para eso, para dar sugerencias. Eh, está en la persona si lo va a tomar o no. Tienen pues el mismo patrón para los tres. Eh, el pronombre personal que ustedes así deseen. Puede ser una tercera persona, plurales, singulares. Y como ustedes ven, todo sigue el mismo patrón. El verbo siempre va a quedar en su forma base y el complemento es... Eh, lo que ustedes quieran, ¿verdad? O depende del contexto en el que ustedes estén hablando. Eh, es necesario utilizar el maybe. El maybe no es necesario utilizarlo. Eh, simple y sencillamente eh, el advice está acá, ¿verdad? El advice se queda hasta acá. Eh, el maybe es como, pues decirle a alguien cosa tuya, ¿verdad? Yo digo que esto, pero tú sabrás lo mejor, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, el advice es solamente lo que está subrayado, ¿verdad? Después del maybe. Entonces, el maybe solo como que le introduce a decirle, ¿puedes o no puedes hacerlo? Si lo haces, es eh, decisión propia. ¿verdad? Así que es eh, lo que tenemos acá con modales, eh, un, haciendo sugerencias con lo que son modals. ¿Estamos bien hasta ahí? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Perfecto. Entonces, eh, nos vamos a ir ya a la siguiente parte. Eh, Déjenme copiar y pegar por acá. Ok, so making suggestions with gerunds, right? So making suggestions with gerunds. So here uh, with the gerunds is a little bit different. Es un poquito diferente, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, puedo tapar donde tengo suggestions con models. Can I hide it? Puedo esconderlo. Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah, because um, this thing is not helping me, right? At the moment. So I need you to have this and I need to have it. I wish. Don't pay attention to la rebeldía de la imagen, right? This doesn't want to cooperate today as anything. <laughs> Rebelde la imagen. <laughs> sí. <laughs> Staking rebellion. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, let's go with this one, right? So these ones, they propose the ING form as a way to give a suggestion, right? As you might be able to see here, you got questions, right? So here you have an, a special question and I'll say an introductory phrase, which is uh, what about, right? What about, right? And you have this one and you can have how about. How about, right? So you can have either or. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. How about, 
a R class, for example, right? Let's say it like that, an R class. What about, right? How about a, what? What else? Uh, they can take classes. What about, how about, um, how about taking, right? I mean, I just take in. How about going to the mall, for example, right? So they are examples out of the blue, right? So this one's. And uh, you are gonna have another one, which is the question that you have there. So you are going to have the auxiliary, right? The auxiliary hat or has plus a personal pronoun plus the verb in past participle plus mm -hmm, about plus the verb in ing form plus a complement, right? Plus the question mark. So they would have a question mark here, right? So there we go. And let's see, we have here a question. And we have, have you thought <clears throat> about they can a dance class with them, for example. So let's see here. I'm about to explain, right? Just give me one minute. I would like to just make a quick difference on the bottom. So here we have uh, making suggestions with gerunds. So in the very first one, you have like a kind of an introductory question, right? Most of the time, these are gonna be questions. So you are gonna use the introductory question that is what about and how about, right? So they are most likely meaning the same, how about it will be like a manner of do something, right? And what about it will be just exactly something. So here, after the introductory question, you are going to have the verb in ing form and after that, a complement. That it will be. So if you want to make a pattern, in case that you would like to do it, it's going to be the intro. The introductory question. Plus verb in ing form plus a complement. <laughs> plus the question mark. So that it will be how you are gonna use it. So, ¿qué tenemos nosotros aquí? Tenemos eh, haciendo sugerencias, ¿verdad? O pues en este caso dando sugerencias con gerunds. En los gerunds usted va a tener una, pues la mayoría van a ser este, pues, preguntas y van a tener una introductory question, que en este caso las introductory question pueden ser estas dos. What about and how about? How about puede ser utilizado si usted eh, va a hacer algo de alguna manera en específica. Eh, me refiero como pues algún procedimiento o pues en este caso si que así como en esta, que si van a ir a algún lugar, ¿verdad? Entonces es como preguntarle pues y qué, qué hay acerca de ir al al mall, ¿verdad? Entonces, si ustedes quieren hacerle una diferencia, esencialmente no la hay, pero si ustedes quieren hacerla, pues pueden hacerlo así. Pueden utilizarlo como una de manera, ¿verdad? De algo o cómo, y este pues solamente como para un objeto. Sin embargo, pueden ser utilizadas, se entienden, pero pues eh, yo recomendaría si van a algún lugar, pues siempre utilizar how about. 
it's up to you, pero pues es recomendación nada más. No hay una regla en específico con eso. Solamente el patrón, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, si usted va a hacer una sugerencia de algo, ¿verdad? Para alguien, quiere hacerle como pues, mira, ¿y ¿qué hay acerca de esto? ¿Verdad? Eh, así como nosotros decimos, ¿y ya pensaste en esto? O, ¿y si haces esto? ¿Verdad? Es, esencialmente es una pregunta a la que le hacemos y si la persona pues al mismo tiempo le sugerimos una manera y la persona está en la persona si tomarlo o no. Entonces es esa introductory question que es esto, el how about y el what about, and then the ing form of the verb y después el verbo en su forma ing y por último un complemento que sería esto ya lo último. No olviden el question mark, ¿verdad? Entonces, ese sería con esta parte. Hay otras más de estas. I gotta be honest with you, this is the only ones that I found. Eh, les tengo que ser honestas, estas han sido las únicas que he encontrado hasta ahorita. ¿verdad? Pero my research. No sé si tienen preguntas de esto. ¿Alguien tiene preguntas? I have a question, teacher. No. Yes, in the first exam, what about talking a uh, dance class uh, i don't use the personal pronoun oh no uh you don't have to, uh, have to use a personal pronoun it's not necessary uh, it's a uh, it's implicit there it's what we call in spanish uh sujeto tacito right we already know uh who we are talking with eh, no se necesita un pronombre personal, ¿verdad? Ya sabemos con quién estamos hablando, está implícito. Por lo general son interlocutores, ¿verdad? Los que están haciendo eso. Eh, un comunicador y un receptor, o sea, entre dos personas. Y no se necesita. Eh, literalmente podemos decir eh, lo que se llama en español, que sería un sujeto tácito, ¿verdad? Ya está implícito el sujeto ahí. Entonces, no la necesitará. Si usted necesitará referirse a un grupo en específico, debería cambiar toda la estructura. Eh, por ejemplo, eh, what about taking a dance class with them? Por ejemplo, ahí sí, ¿verdad? Con ellos. Y si sería de otra manera, si usted quería decir, what about if you ask her to dance with you. Y como ustedes pueden ver, la estructura se pierde totalmente. Entonces, si ustedes quieren mencionar a alguien en específico con esta sugerencia, ¿verdad? Con la, con la introductory question para dar una sugerencia, la estructura va a cambiar completamente, ¿verdad? Eh, ya sería acá con un infinitivo. Y acá pues sí mantendríamos un, un verbo en ING, pero de igual manera pues ya estamos mencionando un grupo con otro tipo de pronombre personal. Okay, teacher. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. So in those cases, right, if you want to use uh, like a per personal pronoun, it's going to change, right? So everything is going to change. So any other question that you might have? Otra pregunta que ustedes tengan. No questions? Teacher. I tell you, I have a problem with the, with internet. Oh, you're having an issue with the internet. Okay, Maria. So I'm gonna take the attendance, right? Uh, did you that? Thank you for letting me know. I'm gonna just place you here. Number one, right? So Isa, you're here with us? Isa? Yeah, I am here. Hey. Thank you so much. Aleli, I saw you. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez, I saw you. And Ana Cecilia Romero, right? Yes, You're here. Teacher. Present. Okay, thank you. Uh, Biden, I know you are here. 
Carlitos, I saw him. Carlos Portillo. Present. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Carlos Dominguez, I saw you, right? Yes, teacher. Present. And Cristina Quintanilla. Cristina, you are here with us. Cristina? Is Cristina here? Miss Cristina, Cristina, Cristina. No, I think she's not here. No, he's not here today. Okay. Good. Yes. Um, I have Damaris Marroquin. Damaris? I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Daisy Hernandez. Day? Miss Daisy? She's not here, I think. Okay, Elizabeth Mejia. Elizabeth? Present, teacher. Present. Thank you. Present, uh, teacher. Thank you. Juan Moran, Eduardo. Present, teacher. Thank you. Luis Miguel. Luis? Not Luis today. Okay. Um, Madeline, just say hello. Our friend is here. Uh, Arsenio, I saw your picture. You are here, right? All right, sir. Thank you. Reinita, you are here today. Yes, present. Thank you. Rufino, I saw Rufino a couple of seconds ago. Sandrita, you are here? I'm here. Thank you. Saul, I haven't heard you today. You are there. Yeah. How are you feeling? Uh, a little better. A little better? <laughs> yes. Even though you look sick. I'm still looking sick. Yes. And I know how you feel about that. Okay, and Wendy, I know she's here. All right, then. Good okay. evening, teacher. Good evening. Teacher, teacher, I'm here. I'm here. The internet is bad. Oh, the internet is giving you issues. Okay, let's see. Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Um, as I said, es que me había parecido verlos cuando entran. Now, um, this thing is not letting me know when someone is came in and when no. Yes, I know you are here, Maria. I just place your attendance here. Okay. Okay. So I'm just missing, you're welcome. So I miss a couple of you, but let's continue. Got questions? No questions? Tienen preguntas? No hay preguntas? Yes, no? No question, teacher. Okay. I'm gonna try to speed it up, everything. Okay, so the last one we have, a, a last one which is kind of, you will say different, funny, is it just a present perfect question, right? Uh, with an infinitive form after the about, right? So without, I'm sorry, with an ing form after the about. So this one it is essentially a present perfect question. You can use it also for suggestions, right? Distance, and uh, it's gonna be used as a question, right? So essentialmente, esta es una pregunta en presente perfecto, con la única diferencia que nosotros tenemos el about y el verbo en forma ing. ¿Puede ser utilizado presente perfecto para las sugerencias? Sí, puede ser utilizado presente perfecto para hacer sugerencias. The only difference is going to be that you are going to add the about and the ing form, and that's it, right? So uh, as long as you have it like that, you can use it, right? So let's see, what do we have here as a pattern? As a pattern, we are going to have the auxiliary depending on the personal pronoun that you would like to use, then you're gonna have the personal pronoun, the verb in the past participle, right? About, which is going to be, um, in this case, an adverb, right? And the verb in ing form, which is gonna be any verb depending on the context that you have, plus the complement, plus the question mark, right? So that is what we have here. This is uh, like a kind of 
British sample, right? It's a British uh, thing. The most common ones in American English are the ones that we have in the upper side of the page. So this one is going to be like a kind of something British, right? Because of the use of about. Um, let's see, here we have the example. Have you talked about taking a dance class with them, for example, right? So you can use it in any context, in any situation. So, ¿qué es lo que nosotros tenemos aquí? Tenemos eh, una oración o una pregunta en presente perfecto utilizando about y el verbo, un verbo en forma ing, dependiendo del contexto que ustedes tengan. Es, Excuse me, teacher, se quedó un buen rato sin audio. No sé si solo soy yo o fuimos todos. No lo sé. No, only you. No only tuve. you. Yeah, because you, okay. Okay. Ah, <laughs> Time to change them. Momento de hacer un cambio. Permítanme. I just want to accommodate myself here. Um, if I have to be honest, I am a, I am a pet, right? <laughs> so that's why he see me like a kind of just going down. <laughs> So uh, what do we have here? What we were saying, right? Uh, this is a British form, right? The most common ones are the ones that we have in the app. So are you able to use it? Yes, you can use it. It's so common, no, not so common, but yes, you can use it. Eh, ¿Qué es lo que nosotros tenemos aquí? Tenemos eh, una pues, pregunta en presente perfecto utilizando about más un verbo en forma ing. Esta forma es eh, británica, ¿verdad? Más allá de ser americana. La forma americana eh, son las que tenemos en la parte de arriba. Quizás podría decir que son los más comunes. Y esta pues ya es algo británico. Por lo general ellos eh, tienen una manera bien metódica de hacer las cosas. Entonces, en esencia es una pregunta en presente perfecto que nos propone utilizar about y un verbo en demanda con ing. ¿Por qué en demanda? Porque su pregunta va a depender del contexto en el que usted esté hablando. Entonces, este sería el patrón y usted lo utiliza con el contexto que usted quiera. Pero mire, teacher, yo siento que para mí eso va a ser demasiado complicado recordarme todo eso. Ah, oh, that's fine. ¿Verdad? That's fine. This is for you to know. Eso está bien, ¿verdad? Eso es para que ustedes lo sepan. You can use these ones, right? Which is, are the most common ones and there is not any problem. However, if you see something like this, right? Don't get scared and remember that this structure is for giving suggestions, right? So it's more in British form. En este, si ustedes ven algo así, no se asusten. Eh, no piensen que la está incorrecto, ¿verdad? Sino que recuerden que si es una pregunta y está de esta manera o de esta forma, es una sugerencia, ¿verdad? Es una sugerencia en forma de pregunta y es más utilizada en forma británica. ¿Sí? ¿We good? ¿Yes? Okay, teacher. Yes, teacher. Ok. Preguntas que tengan. Preguntas, dudas, comentarios. Teacher, ya casi se nos acaba la hora. Sí, ya casi. So, we go with the last ones. If you see me seeing, I have here my agenda, right? So, I wrote everything, but I don't have some time to do it here. So, we are going to have questions, right? Or negative questions, right? And this one is going to be like in Spanish that you said, ¿Y por qué no haces esto? ¿Verdad? Mira, ¿y por qué no le pones un poquito de sal al arroz? ¿Verdad? Que ya está todo que no sabe bien. ¿verdad? Es esa palabra y el por qué. ¿Verdad? Si usted le va a dar la sugerencia. Y porque mejor no le pones un elástico por ahí, le dicen a uno. Y así va a estirar un poquito más. Ok. So, uh, it will be this one, right? So, you can use the one that we have here. Why? Don't. Right. 
where is my apostrophe? Y done plus the personal pronoun. Plus verb in base form plus a complement, right? So there we go. We have one, right? So you can use another one, right? Another one, yes, another one. It can be in model. Then, right? And I'll do it like this. Kiran plus the personal pronoun. And here I forget something. <clears throat> and I'm gonna copy paste this. <clears throat> Are you sleepy today? Bien sueñito? No? Yes. A little. Yes. A little. Sí, están bien calladitos. Sorry, yes. teacher. You write, you wrote, couldn't? It's missing the L. Ah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I put an N instead of that. What's going on? Fíjense que yo me trabo porque este es un tico a mí. Every, uh, there we go. That one is fine. Yes, we are good. Every day I use uh, one computer, right? For my regular job. And this is my personal computer. And the other computer is kind of different, right? So this one is making me feel like crazy. What's the question, right? Easy, it's acting crazy. So you have this ones. Um, this ones are just questions, right? In a negative form. And as I said, right, is uh, the phrase that we say, y por qué no, right? Mira, por qué no haces esto? Podrías hacer esto, no pudiste hacer esto, and so on, right? So, it's uh, for making suggestions. Are they usable? Yes, they are usable, right? Pretty usable. Maybe in Spanish, we are not using them so common, right? We substitute them for different things. And now we have those ones. We are going to place uh, some examples, right? Let me start from down to up. So, Are you able to hear the barking? No. No, okay. If you are able to hear it and it's interfering, let me know. I'm gonna close the, the door, the door, the, the window. Uh, why don't you think it's a good idea to go to the movies, All right? Uh, for example, this one, Kiran, we speak taxi. Instead of avoiding the bus. And here we have the last one, which is this one. Why? Don't you join to are you join on online dating? 
Okay. Did you have a good? Oh, okay, thank you, Christina. Really appreciate it for letting me know. Perdón, chicos, pasé esto porque si no se me va a olvidar. So, did you have a good Monday or was just tired Monday? Okay. So, y aquí tenemos nuestros ejemplos, ¿verdad? Um, so, in this one is why don't you join an online dating app, for example, right? Couldn't we take a taxi instead of waiting the bus, for example? Don't you think it's a good idea to go to the movies, right? Bueno, en esto sería, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿No crees que sería bueno unirte a una online dating app, verdad? A una app de citas, por ejemplo. Hubiese sido, no crees, o en este caso, ¿verdad? Hubiese sido mejor tomar un taxi en lugar de esperar el bus. Y pues el último, ¿no piensas o piensas que sería una buena idea ir a, las, a la película, ¿verdad? O al cine, en este caso, dependiendo. Translating, I'm not so good, I'm sorry. Entonces, pues pasándolas al español, no soy muy buena porque eh, se pierden palabras. Entonces, si lo pasamos a nuestro español latino es, ¿y por qué no te unís, verdad, a una app de citas? Y si es, tomamos un taxi en lugar de esperar un, el bus, ¿verdad? Así sería ya nuestro español. Y si tomamos un taxi en lugar de esperar el bus, y este, mira, ¿no crees que sería bueno ir, a las, ir al cine, verdad? Entonces, eh, nuestro pues, español latino es totalmente diferente la, la oración, pero esencialmente esa es la idea. ¿verdad? Darle una sugerencia a alguien en forma de pregunta, diciéndole, pues, ¿no crees que sería bueno? De manera negativa. Es bastante común, sí, allá es bastante común. Nosotros casi no lo escuchamos, ¿verdad? So, nosotros eh, quizás eh, soltamos, ¿verdad? En nuestro español, pero um, en inglés es un poquito diferente. So, no sé si ustedes tienen alguna pregunta. O si no está lo suficientemente claro, buscamos otra manera para poder explicarlo. No tengan pena, me lo pueden decir. Uh -huh. Me quedé sin audio. All good. All good. Ah, vaya. Vale. It's good, teacher. It's good. All good. Y no ustedes se me están mimiendo. <laughs> <laughs> se me están yes, mimiendo. Sí. Se ¿Sí? me están mimiendo. <laughs> ya le vi. Que se me están durmiendo. It's Monday, teacher. I know I have like a kind of terrible Monday <laughs> since the very beginning of my trip. It was a crazy Monday. Let me ask, uh, talking to my boss and she said, I feel like if I haven't done anything and I been doing a lot of things, one thing around here, one thing, another one there. And she was like, yeah, I know, I feel you, right? <laughs> I've been the same since I started my chief. So, yeah, I know how you feel, right? So, well, anyways, it's our last week, right? So on Friday is Friday payday for some of us. And Friday uh, for you to rest, for being happy, for being taking this curse and just getting ready to take the next one, right? So, ya casi viernes, ¿verdad? Más dicha es lunes, sí, pero mente positiva, ¿verdad? <laughs> ya casi para algunos días de pago, para otros todavía hay que esperar un poquito, pero de igual manera creo que estén contentos, ¿verdad? Ya es la última semana y es lo último que queda. ¿verdad? Felices, contentos y orgullosos de ustedes mismos, ¿verdad? Porque han, eh, pues, 
tomado a bien estar acá cuatro semanas, ¿verdad? Que es un mes entero en clase, que no es fácil, es una hora, pero no es fácil, ¿verdad? Así que, pues, um, de esa manera, ¿verdad? Así que tratemos de que esto sea lo mejor posible ya para lo último. So, veamos entonces, eh, with infinitives, right? With infinitives, there's not too much to talk about, right? So, as well, you have an introductory uh, phrase. So, one option, right? And uh, it might be, right, a good idea to check. So, in this case, it depends on you. Uh, for example, one option, right? One option, which is going to be your introductory plus the verb be, right? This one you're going to use verb be as it is in the proposed plus two, which is going to be the infinitive plus a verb in base form, right? Plus a complement. And this one is just a simple sentence, right? Es una oración simple. Another one you have it might be, right? So it might be a good idea. This one is the whole phrase, the one that you are gonna use. A good idea, right? Plus the two, right? Plus verb in base form, plus the complement, right? And that's it. So it will depend on you how you would like to use it, right? Um, for example, you can use it in the past. Yes, you can use it in the past. One option was to take the taxi, for example, right? We don't have any context at the moment, so we are going to make just examples out of the blue. Might be a good idea to take the taxi once again, right? So for you to get in context. Right? So that it will be basically how you are gonna use them. Um, are, there, are there more to make suggestions? Yes, there are more introductory phrases, uh, which is the ones that you can make suggestions, right? Definitely these are the most common and the main ones, we will say like that. Aquí tenemos eh, otras maneras de dar sugerencia, ¿verdad? Tienen de nueva cuenta una pues una frase introductoria, en este caso una opción y es una buena idea, ¿verdad? En este caso, pues eh, las dos se van a utilizar de esta manera para introducir nuestra sugerencia. One option va a depender, ¿verdad? De lo que usted quiera decir, porque si son options, usted va a decir are, ¿verdad? Entonces tiene que dar todas las opciones. Um, pongámoslo acá. Okay. You can say it like that. Aquí tenemos otro ejemplo, ¿verdad? Dependiendo de lo que usted vaya a decir o de lo que quiera, pues, darle a sugerir a la persona, así va a ser el verbo que usted va a utilizar. Se puede utilizar en pasado y se puede utilizar en presente con el verbo be, ¿verdad? Entonces, de esa manera se va a hacer. Eh, si son varias cosas de las que se pueden escoger, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, el último um, example que tenemos ahí, usted puede utilizar are y da, pues, las opciones, ¿verdad? Luego, posteriormente, nosotros tenemos it might be. It might be va acompañado de otra frase que es a good idea, ¿verdad? Entonces, esas dos acá, estos dos, se van a ir juntitos y nos van a formar nuestra frase introductoria. Right, the introductory phrase. And then you're gonna have the two, and this two is acting as an infinitive, right? To introduce the infinitive for a verb. Y ese two está actuando como para introducir el infinitivo de un verbo. Then you are gonna have the base form, right? And the complement depending on the context. Y por último van a tener la forma base como acá, y el complemento dependiendo del contexto que usted esté hablando. Sí. Are we good on that? Estamos bien en esta. Teacher, una. I have a question. 
este, estamos utilizando one, op, one option, pero después el R. Perdón, este, y se me quedó ah. el, 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 la S. Ok, ok. Ajá. Esa era mi pregunta. Sí. Esa era mi pregunta. Sí, perdóneme. Aquí sería cambiarlo, ¿verdad? Some options. No sería one option, ¿verdad? Serían some options. Algunas opciones, ¿verdad? Entonces ustedes lo pueden utilizar en demanda. Si ustedes así lo desean. Perdóneme, no me había okay. fijado. Thanks. Yes. You're welcome. Gracias por hacerme saber. Eh, sí, ¿verdad? Entonces eh, puede poner algunas opciones son y tal, ¿verdad? Y darle ahí a la persona su sugerencia de las diferentes opciones. Y si solamente pues hay una más, aparte de lo que ya se sabe, pues solamente se da esa de más. ¿Alguna duda, pregunta? Que ustedes tengan. I'm sorry, I'm here. I'm drinking water, okay? So if you have questions, let me know. ¿Tienen preguntas? ¿No? ¿Estamos bien hasta acá? Estamos bien, teacher. Estamos bien. Ok, entonces eh, vamos a seguir. Ya sería lo último, ¿verdad? Lo que vamos a hacer. Y eh, en este caso, pues, me hubiese gustado alguna práctica para dar sugerencias, pero el tiempo me apremia, ¿verdad? Lo lamento mucho. Así que vamos a pasar a la unidad 5, que es la que nos toca en esta semana. Y we are going to talk about the future. I have some questions here for you. So I have five questions. For example, how often do you think about the future? I have a second question. What do you hope for your own future, right? Three, what comes to mind when you think about your future, right? And what fears do you have for the future? And where do you see yourself in 10, 20, and 50 years from now? Okay, so I have five questions here. I would like you to take a couple of seconds to think about those questions and that you can give me your opinions. Y tengo aquí cinco preguntas, ¿verdad? Me gustaría que ustedes tomen un par de segundos, piensen en cada una de las preguntas y en posibles respuestas y las discutimos. ¿Está bien? Okay. Yes. Okay. So when you are ready, yes. you let me. Awesome. So when you're ready, let me know. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sleepy. If it's similar, like you kind of. How do you yes. say, um, oh my gosh, I forgot the word. I'm a little <laughs> sleepy. I am sorry. Ah, incertidumbre. <laughs> incertidumbre. Incertidumbre. Let's see, right? <laughs> Let me check. I don't know, to be honest. No lo sé, para ser honesta. Vamos a verificar. Oh, no. Believe me, for me, it's been like a crazy day. As you, right? Um, I wish to be in bed. <laughs> Maybe snoring, <laughs> like snorlax. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you are asleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's been, oh my gosh. Hmm. Let me see. Hmm. Bueno, we will use this word. Uh, let me show you. 
Let's see. <laughs> For your question, I uh, we are gonna use this word uncertainty, like this uncertainty, uncertainty, uncertainty. Yes, uncertainty. Uncertainty. Uh -huh. Uncertainty. You. Yes. You're welcome. So yeah. Uh, today was one of those days that I received a message prior my chief of stars. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, that's not true. It's been a crazy day. Can I try? Oh, sure. Go, please. So, well, I usually think in future a lot because it is important to me why um, uh, right now I'm working hard to improve my skills. And I would like to be a an manager, and I know it is very difficult to do. So for, for that reason, I think about it, but I know, it, how do you say, lo lograré o no lo lograré? Uh, but do you want to say lo lograré or no lo lograré? Or you don't Both. know? Because I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can say like this. I'll make it. I'll make it. Or probably I won't be able to make it. Mm, I can't mm -hmm. see. Are you, you can writing? See. I'm writing and I'm going to just uh, share. Perdón, a veces lo dejo estancado en una sola imagen y a veces pongo todo. Probably I won't be able to make it. Ahorita se lo pongo. Now, today is not the Freaky Friday, today is the Freaky Monday. Okay, so this one, um, here uh, you need an apostrophe and here you will need an apostrophe. This is how you will produce it in just talking, right? And uh, for writing, uh, please produce the full form. So I'll make it, I'll make it. And if you are not gonna make it right, so probably I won't be able to make it, right? Quizás okay. no pueda lograrlo, o si lo voy a lograr, right? So this is will be with a will, yes. I will make it, probably I won't be able to make it. Okay, okay so nowadays I think a lot about it because I don't know uh, in future I will make it or probably I wouldn't able to make it. Mm, Así era, o sea, <laughs> no, it will be one. Want. Want mm -hmm. make it. Porque si me dice wouldn't, ahí sería otra cosa. Estaría significando algo más. Así que hay que tener cuidado. Want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or probably sure. I won't make. Won't make it or won't be able to make it. Yes. Either or. Won't yep. Good job. Yeah. So that's it. That's it. All right. Yes, right. So you feel the uncertainty, right? It's really difficult. But I think that you are going to be able to make it, right? So yeah. You could I wish. <laughs> you will. It's not only wishing, right? So uh, a part of our future, right, is uh, I think it will be the 70% of our decisions, right? And how we have our mindset, right? So I know path is difficult, 
but if you give up um, on everything or you are with that uncertainty, you are not going to be able to, to go ahead and continue because our mind is really strong, right? So um, you need to think that you are able to. I mean, if someone can do it, what this person has that I don't, right? I have everything. I mean, uh, you got your hands, you got your feet, you got your legs, you, um, you have the same, right? You see as I see, you talk as I talk, you have your earring for uh, good. So you're not having, or I'm not having anything else than you. So maybe the only difference is how I see the situation and how you see it, right? So people say that positivism won't take you anywhere. Yes, it will take you somewhere because if you see the things in a positive way, you will be taking advantage of every issue that you have, right? So it's true. As a humans, we get stressed. As a humans, we get sad, right? But it's on us on how we are going to manage our feelings, right? So your feelings can determine so many things, right? If you wish something, work for it, right? So it's not going to come at it from the, the heaven or from me the call, no. Make the miracle happen, right? So... Entonces, eh, la mayoría de, del futuro, ¿verdad? o la manera en la que yo lo veo, es el 70% de nuestras decisiones, ¿verdad? Lo otro eh, es, pues, ya nuestro ambiente y demás. Depende de usted cómo va a tomar todo, ¿verdad? Su mente es muy poderosa. Por ejemplo, las personas que logran mucho que tiene, esa persona que yo no tenga, de hecho, tiene lo mismo que yo tengo, con la única diferencia que ven la, las cosas de diferente manera, ¿verdad? Entonces, muchas personas nos dicen que el positivismo no nos lleva a ningún lado. Sí lo va a llevar a algún lado porque usted va a ver oportunidades en lugar de ponerse triste, ¿verdad? O si pasó algo, se va a levantar, no se va a quedar ahí, en el suelo, ¿verdad? Se va a volver a levantar tantas veces como sea necesario hasta alcanzarlo. Entonces, si realmente usted desea algo, tiene que trabajar por eso, ¿verdad? Hay que trabajar por eso. Entonces, eh... Esa es la manera en la que yo lo veo, ¿verdad? Entonces, si se desea, se puede, ¿verdad? Todo se puede en esta vida y siempre hay oportunidad hasta que Diosito nos llame, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, pues eh, mañana vamos a continuar conversando para que ustedes tengan eh, oportunidad de preparar sus respuestas. Vamos a tener una conversación antes de comenzar la clase, unos 10, 15 minutos para que ustedes utilicen el futuro. Pueden utilizar cualquier futuro, going to or will. Nosotros vamos a ver will con probabilidades eh, en, esta, en esta unidad, creo yo, no, no me equivoco. Así que, pues, vayan a mimir. ¿verdad? porque ya me están durmiendo <risa> si no han cenado cenen, descansen mañana es otro día verdad y hay una nueva oportunidad y pues gracias por estar acá verdad cuídense mucho nos vemos, cualquier cosa me escriben y perdón que hoy no les escribí have a good night bye 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 bye